How's it going everybody, Dato Doi here with another Dragon Ball Fighters video and this time we're going to be taking a look at everything we know so far about the next DLC character for Dragon Ball Fighters, that character being of course GT Goku. Now the reason I decided to make this video was because since the first leak for the GT Goku skin, we have gotten a couple new pieces of information that I'd like to share, as well as higher quality screenshots for Goku that actually allows us to talk about what we're seeing from this character in terms of gameplay. The other reason I'm doing this video is because I still think we're a ways out from seeing any sort of trailer for Goku or even his next scan leak, uh, not to mention his release date, which is still up in the air, although there are definitely some rumors talking about when we can expect to see him that I will cover later on. For now though, let's talk about some things that this character will 100% have upon his eventual release. Starting with the character's supers, his level 1 special is the Super Kamehameha, in which he powers up to Super Saiyan and launches a beam straight across the field towards his opponent. This type of special move is not uncommon to Dragon Ball fighters at all, in fact we've seen it in one of the most standard characters in the game, Super Saiyan Goku, it is very much like his level 1. In order to differentiate it in some way though, they have added an additional transformation mechanic to the level 1 that works as follows. If you have every member of your team alive, GT Goku will still do the normal Super Kamehameha, but if you lose one character and have two or less remaining, Goku will power up into Super Saiyan 3 and launch a more powerful beam, resulting in more damage. As of now, this Super and this variation of the Super are the only two confirmed level 1s for the character. On the level 3 side of things though, is where things start to get really interesting. His level 3 in this game is going to be the Super Universal Spirit Bomb, and again, having this move doesn't really set him apart from other Gokus in the game. Base Goku also has access to a level 3 Spirit Bomb, and while it is cool and can do some major damage if it connects, the hardest part about having a move like this in actual matches is that 1. Base Goku cannot act until after the Spirit Bomb completes its full animation, leaving a huge amount of time for the opponent to punish Goku if the move doesn't connect right away. Actually connecting the move is its second biggest weakness or very specific combo setups that usually involve sparking in order to get the move to connect. None of this is really as practical as it should be for landing a level 3 for that much needed hard knockdown in ranked and competitive matches. And it's exactly because of this that you probably don't see much use of base Goku in high online ranks or in tournaments. It just really sucks to have a character that when left alone can't use a level 3 for the hard knockdown and then go into a mix up. Thankfully though this is where GT Goku separates himself from his base Goku counterpart. For starters after initially throwing the Universal Spirit Bomb, GT Goku will fall to the ground and be free to act. Of course, this alone isn't going to make it the best level 3 in the game or anything, but being able to act is a nice improvement. Much more importantly, however, is this isn't the only level 3 he'll have access to, as it is confirmed that Base Goku does have a hidden level 3 that they are saving until this month's V-Jump to officially reveal to us. Now, if this move is a standard level 3 in which Goku hits the opponent, goes into an animation, and then gets the hard knockdown, that will make him much more versatile than Base Goku. But again, like I said, it isn't confirmed what this level 3 is going to do because of the way they've hyped up this level 3 as well as the character being GT Goku, a lot of fans are expecting this level 3 to in some way involve Super Saiyan 4 Goku. Adding on to this is the fact Latin America did tease that it is going to be another transformation, so at this point I would put the degree of Super Saiyan 4 being there at almost 100%, like it's definitely going to happen at this point. With that said though, just because a transformation is going to be in the game doesn't mean everybody's going to get what they want. At the moment, people are fractured into thinking it's going to be either a normal animation super, like along the lines of a cooler level 3 where once you get a hit, it plays a little animation, while others are really hoping that it's going to be more along the lines of an install super. Think of characters like Soul Bad Guy from the Guilty Gear series, or even Golden Frieza from Dragon Ball Fighters. Install supers are usually supers that transform the characters in some way and alter their special moves, movement speed, movement options, etc. In terms of usability, the install would have to be pretty good to make it more viable than just a normal level 3 that results in a hard knockdown, but it's hard to argue that it wouldn't be insanely cool. The reason I don't see the install happening though is unfortunately Goku GT Kid and Super Saiyan 4 Goku are vastly different characters in terms of how they would attack their opponent, size, and pretty much everything. The amount of balancing work that would have to go into it as well as modeling, animation, move choices, at that point they would probably get more out of it just making Super Saiyan 4 a standalone character. Although just because something takes a lot of work doesn't necessarily mean I want to rule it out for the game, uh, they've gone through a lot of extreme lengths in order to make some pretty beautiful stuff that normally most companies wouldn't even pay attention to. That transitions us nicely to a piece of information I didn't have before when talking about GT Goku, that being his intro or win animation, I actually don't know, I believe it is his intro though, where he rides in on Shenron, sitting on his head there, uh, and then the camera pans up to his face, uh, and presumably if it's his intro he jumps off, or if it's victory it just shows the little victory symbol in the corner, uh, and that's the game. Making 
making an intro like this is a huge fan service moment and definitely goes a little way towards making me believe, hey, you know what, maybe if they're going that hard with this character, they might make it an install, but I still wouldn't invest myself too heavily into that. It will most likely be a normal super animation uh, in which he activates Super Saiyan 4, maybe does a dragon fist or something. Now we can actually go into Goku GT's normals and specials, which we do see a little bit more of in these new screenshots. One thing I was super excited to see when we first initially got the scan is that they decided to make the power pole a part of his design, but they didn't stop there. In fact, it seems that it's going to be a pretty big part of his game plan with some movement options being shown off, as well as long power pole normals that would help keep space between him and his opponent and help solve the issue of him being a smaller character, thus lacking a little bit of range on his normals. The movement options, while definitely needing testing in actual matches against actual people, do look like a pretty fun gimmick and might be fun to throw some assist in there and see what mix-ups you can get. Other than that, we have a frame of what looks like to be his smash attack, maybe it's a vanish, and we also have what I believe to be the end of an auto combo, but so far it definitely looks like it's going to play a huge part in his kit. As far as screenshots go for specials, we got a better picture of the reverse Kamehameha, as well as a different image of him aiming it down, which I believe they called a different move, uh, but it looks pretty practical in terms of a downwards Kamehameha, uh, just a bit shorter. In the new picture for the reverse Kamehameha though, it definitely looks like this move will be useful in covering a lot of distance on the ground there. Uh, it seems like it will be equal to about that of Bardock's quarter circle forward light, which is an insanely good move. Hopefully the startup can compete in terms of speed because having it be an option that you can throw out without consequence is a pretty big part into what makes it such a devastating move. The only thing that has me a little bit worried here is that from the animation and the way Trunks is being lifted off his feet, it might actually be a move that smashes the opponent towards a corner, uh, which would make the move a lot less useful. But of course, even though it's obvious, I feel the need to say that if it does get this property of smashing people to the corner, having moves that carry people across the screen is a good thing. That about does it in terms of the screenshots and new information we've gotten over the course of the weeks since that first initial leak. Now the only two questions remaining to cover is when will we see the V-Jump that reveals Goku's hidden level 3, and when will we actually see Goku GT release? The answer to that first question is while V-Jump leaks can differ month to month, usually the window you want to look out for stuff is the 17th to the 19th. That is usually where you're going to see the most information about pretty much anything in the V-Jump leak. Though again, there have been months where it comes a little earlier, even on the 17th, I've seen some stuff release, and sometimes nobody leaks anything at all. Odds are though, a text version describing what is in the V-Jump leak is more likely to come a bit earlier than the actual scan itself, so be prepared for that. And as for when Goku GT will actually release, Rufamonger on Twitter let people know that he has been hearing stuff about Goku GT releasing on the 20th. I asked him about it and he said some people told him as well as it being hinted at the stream. I was watching that stream myself of course, I don't speak the language, but I was expecting something to be announced. And the only thing I remember is that they did talk about a competition they were going to be running, an online tournament in Japan only, uh, because it's going to be in the Japanese lobbies. Uh, so maybe they will release him at the end of that event or before it. Uh, I can't personally say whether or not this is true, uh, but from what I'm hearing, it is going to be a single character release, which is a good thing. Part of me is still afraid that they're going to be like, no, we actually want to release two characters at once and delay Goku GT for like two months to come along with the next character, but hopefully that isn't going to happen and we'll just see Goku GT either late April or early May. I still believe he's going to be in a late April release. But that's it guys, that's all the Goku GT information we have. Hopefully this could catch you up if you've been out of the loop or if you knew some things but didn't know the others. Hopefully this got some information out to you as well. This is going to be the last time we talk about Goku GT until his trailer releases, which will hopefully come out late April, a couple days before his release, or a couple days after the Shonen Jump officially releases. Until then though guys, this has been Dato Doyo. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, go down to the comments and let me know if you're looking forward to Goku GT. I know a lot of people weren't initially, but some have been swayed, others not so much. Uh, regardless, I'm excited to be playing this guy for a full week of Ranked as soon as he releases, discovering some combos and stuff, some tech, and you can expect to see all of that here on the channel. So subscribe if any of that sounds interesting to you. If you want to watch some videos right now though, there should be some on your screen, so feel free to check those out if any of them catch your eye. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.